Hello and welcome to another quick demonstration using Ansible to do interesting things. This go around, I'm taking ServiceNow and I'm going to tie in that ServiceNow self-service portal. Uh, it will connect to Ansible Tower. Tower will then connect to VMware vCenter. Um, ultimately, you're going to be able to order uh, virtual machines of various kinds based on templates in ServiceNow. Tower will actually do all of the provisioning in VMware. So there is a blog post that's pre-existing done by Michael Ford um, about kind of the step-by-step -step of tying ServiceNow with Ansible Tower. So that was really well done, very in-depth, kind of step-by-step -step on all of that. So I'm not going to rehash all of that. Um, I'm just going to kind of hit the highlights in here. So if you take a look at Tower, if you're going to tie in an external application via OAuth, you go into Applications and you create a new one. So I'm going to take a look at my ServiceNow developer instance right here. This is kind of the basic settings you need. Once you click save, it actually spits out a token one time. So you want to capture that token and uh, apply it uh, in your, I guess, secrets engine, wherever you're going to hang on to that. Uh, but ultimately, you're going to utilize that within uh, ServiceNow to keep those records. So in ServiceNow, once we get here, there's some um, infrastructure you put in place to put in the OAuth querying process where you place the token in and all that stuff. And that's extremely boring, but thoroughly documented already. So I'm just going to take a look at the REST message. So once you've got the OAuth set up, so it's basically a connection between um, your ServiceNow instance and your Tower instance, right? So they can securely communicate. Now it's time to actually do something with it. And that's where you do the outbound REST messages. So for here, I created one called Tower VMware Provision REST. So if I pop into this guy, I can see the endpoint is actually set up as the specific job template I want to launch, right? And so this is found in the, um, the API browser on your Tower instance. So if you're in your Tower instance, tower, gregsoul.com, and I put forward slash API in there, it'll actually hit the API browser. And so I can start browsing through all of my templates and I can find them easily in there. Another way of actually figuring out which um, uh, templates you wanna call is if you go into your templates itself and it's uh, snow create VMs, no survey. I created one that actually does a survey where it prompts you if you're gonna run it from the, from the tower instance itself and then one where it doesn't. But if you go into there and you look in the URL itself, you'll actually see it says job template and it gives you the number 37 right there. So in my tower instance, uh, it's just job templates 37 and launch. So I needed a bunch of variables as well. And I created those down here in the um, tower HTTP method request. And again, this is all documented in Michael Ford's uh, blog post very extensively. So I have 10 variables that I'm going to be collecting. I mean, it's a lot of information you're going to want to, to take and pass over, pass, pass over uh, to your tower. So in, um, in essence, what I'm doing is I'm collecting all the variables that um, from the service item. So whenever I create a, a service catalog item, I'm going to have various variables, you know, information. So it's going to be how big do I want the hard drive, how many CPUs, RAM, all that stuff is going to be variables that I'm going to then pass over at runtime. Once I have all of my variables configured, uh, down here I can pop up to HTTP request, and this is what's actually going to be passed over um, at execution point uh, on this HTTP method over to Tower. And so this is going to be um, how I accept the, uh, the variables. So in my uh, service catalog, it's going to be, say, variable one, variable two. That's what I just named them to be kind of generic. And then when it passes over to Tower, it's actually going to be passing them over as um, these variables in my Tower playbook. So VM name, VM template, VM disk size, right? All of that information is getting passed over at runtime. So popping over to my actual playbook, I'm going to take a look at it really quick. You can see all the variables that it's going to be replacing. So while these are in here, they're actually at runtime going to be replaced by whatever is passed over. And it is a fairly simple uh, playbook. So you see I have some variables here for um, vCenter username and password. And those are actually going to be replaced at runtime using a custom credential in Tower, which if you haven't used custom credentials, it's a great way to be able to uh, capture secure information and pass it into your playbooks at runtime securely. 
So if you look in the task sections, this is uh, right here where the magic really happens. It's using the VMware guest uh, module, right? A pre-written chunk of code and it's passing in the connection information, but then all of the supplied information, say VMware folder, what you wanna name the VM, the data center cluster it's actually gonna utilize. So all that information is just passed in as variables, right? Variableized to keep it very simple. At the very end, after it creates it, it's going to um, capture the output of that run, or rather that individual task as deploy VM, and it's just gonna display it. So within Tower, I can actually see um, all the parameters that were supplied to it. So now that I've created that, I've got the uh, playbook in place. I've got my uh, variables here that I'm passing over. I want to create a, uh, well, one, I want to create a workflow is the very next thing. So in my workflow editor, created a new workflow, named it Tower Provision VMware. I try and make all of my um, various things that follow in line sort of named similarly so I can kind of keep track of them. By default, it just beginning to end is connected. I deleted that. One, I created an approval group here so that uh, once the request is made, it's put in the system, it actually has to go to a group to be approved. Once it's approved, it runs this script right here. And let's see, I believe you can click over here, you know, in the uh, HTTP outbound method, click preview script usage. And it actually gives you content that you can just copy and paste in. And that's virtually what I did here in the editor. Only once you copy and paste, you actually replace, um, say variable four with current variables variable four, right? So in the form, this is what it's actually going to be capturing and it's going to pass it over to there. And then the HTTP method takes this variable name, converts it to whatever the playbook is looking for, and then passes it over in that instance. So it's really just going to replace all those variables and then fire it off over to tower. So once you create that, we can create the item in the service catalog. So it should be maintain items and our catalog definition, tower provision VMware. In here, by default, I want to come over here to process engine and I want to set the workflow as that workflow we just created. And then I create all the variables. So uh, single line for name of VM, multiple choice for OS template type, right? So for uh, some of these, say like OS template type, I have a handful. So I've got three different templates I want folks to be able to choose from. So multiple choice whenever possible, I try and keep it um, as succinct. So I don't really want users to type things in if I can possibly help it, right? Just to keep down um, uh, mistakes, right? And so uh, what is it we're asking them? What uh, variables are going to save to? And remember those map uh, over, we've already seen that. But then you have the default value. I usually like to set a default value, but then in the multiple choice section, here are my template types I'm be passing over. So I can do CentOS, I can do RHEL 8.1, and I can do Windows 2016. So once I <clears throat> create the item, I add all the variable choices I want. It's already going to be calling this script. I should be able to save it and then utilize it. So I'm going to pop over to my test user. This is user Greg Soul, and in the service catalog, I'm going to use the Tower Provision VMware. And actually, I'm going to pop into my uh, Tower install, or rather, this is my uh, vCenter. As you can see, uh, this is going to create, it's going to be like uh, Snow Dash Deploy is going to be the machine name. So you can see there are no Snow Dash Deploy VMs in there right now. So if I pop back over, this guy, I'll make it snow deploy VM1. And again, I'm just going to leave this default. I'm going to leave it as CentOS 8. These actually provision in about a minute and a half, so it's fairly uh, fast. But then you can see all the default options that are in here. And I'm just going to leave those and say order now. Give it a second. It should put the order in place. I'm going to pop back in. So part of these workflows is a uh, approval process and so I'm just gonna cheat it I don't feel like logging in as one of the approved users so I'm just gonna pop into that request and I'm gonna change the view to default view so I see a little bit more information so you can see all the variables that I chose in there and then down in the approvers list I'm just gonna pick a random approver 
and I'm going to tell it to go ahead and approve. If I pop back into my tower instance and I go to jobs, I should see it fired off now. Yep, there it goes. 317, so it's actually creating the instance. If I pop back into my vCenter, you can see Snow Deploy 1 is being provisioned and it's actively operating right now. All right, so the magic of uh, editing has allowed us to skip through the provision time there. So if you take a look over here, you can see Snow Deploy 1 is complete. It says complete. Again, it only takes about a minute and a half for that template to fully deploy. So I'll open the console really quick. Let's see if I can remember the password. Excellent, I remembered. So if I take a look at the IP addressing, that lines up. 10.1.12.51, that's the static IP that I put in place, and it should be on the network. Excellent, provisioned. So it really doesn't take very long. Uh, the workflow is fairly succinct for the end user. They basically just pop in and uh, pop in, fill out the, uh, the form for whatever individual variables they want. Right, so we're allowing them to name the machine, choose the template type, hard drive size. And again, this hard drive size could be um, allowed to, uh, you could allow them to specify specifically what it is and then put some bounds in there. Um, but this is kind of a, an easier t-shirt size sort of system. Choose the amount of RAM, number of CPUs. Um, yeah, if we wanna verify everything that was put in place, it was uh, sent to eight, 40, four gigs of RAM, four CPUs. So if I pop back over to this individual machine, if I edit his settings, four CPUs, four gigs of memory, 40 hard drive, right? So it actually allocated everything specifically and then even down to the folder that it's gonna put it in. So it put it in the central cluster, put it in Ansible, Greg folder, so there it is. So that's individual to me. So that's my specific infrastructure. So if you guys have any questions or comments about how all of this works, how it all goes together, I will eventually have a blog post if this already isn't in the blog post. So thank you, and uh, we'll see you next time.